guess who is now preparing for her first marathon? I am running a marathon next summer and I'm so excited. <laughs> So I ran a marathon. I have been waiting for this for so long and it finally happened. So today I'm gonna talk about my experience, how it was for me, and I'm also gonna talk about how I did it because I can imagine some of you are here to hear that because I was Googling around before I did it to see how other people were preparing and stuff like that. I've talked about this a little bit before, but I just wanted to say that I always wanted to run a marathon, but I always thought that only a certain kind of people can do that. I just didn't think I had the mindset or just the capacity to do it. I thought that people were just born to do it or they weren't. Regular people like me cannot do that. I am not a runner. Okay. <laughs> I like to run, but I'm not, you know, in a running group or I've never done it in any organized way. I just like to run. So it's not like I'm special. I just put my mind to it and I worked for it and I did it. So yeah, it's possible. But now that I've done it, I definitely understand why when you tell people you're gonna run a marathon, they think you're crazy. It's just a wild experience and I am so overwhelmed still. But I also want to say now that I don't think everyone can do it, and I'm not trying to be really negative, but if you don't think you can do it, then you you won't be able to do it. I think for me, I would say it was 70% my brain and my mentality doing the job and 30% my body because from 25 kilometers, my brain no longer thought I could do it. So I had to convince myself every kilometer from then that yes, we can do this. Like get your ass together. You can do it. Like we're gonna get there. We've gotten this far. We're not gonna give up now. And clearly I was able to do it. Physically, I was able to do do it. Okay, first of all, I should have said this in the, in the beginning, but all of this is my experience and my experience only. I've run one marathon in my whole life. That's the only experience I'm talking about. I don't have anything else to compare to. I am just a regular person without any actual knowledge about this other than what I've Googled. Also, this is Tuesday. I ran the marathon on Saturday and I ran a full marathon, which is a 42.195 kilometers. Okay, I'm gonna try and organize my thoughts here and I'm gonna go to the beginning. I'm gonna talk about the experience first. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> oh, I'm such a mess still. I am a very emotional person and the day before, actually two days before, I was kind of a mess. So I would tear up every time I thought about like running the marathon, not because I was scared, but because I, this was just something that I really wanted to do. So I was just so ready to get it done and so just personally invested in achieving this because I was so excited. Again, it's something I've wanted to do my whole life. So it was just so crazy that it was finally happening. The morning of the marathon, I got up, had coffee, played TFT on the couch, had my porridge, and then I went down with, well, okay, I'm gonna say this. I am very lucky that I ran the marathon in my hometown, so I had, you know, my network of friends and family around me, so that was just lovely. I went down there with my parents, and they told me before I got out of the car that, remember, we're not gonna be disappointed in you if you can't do it. We really, really think you can do it but if something happens like for for whatever reason if you can't do it no one's gonna be disappointed in you when I got there my friend Ingrid was there waiting for me and it was so nice that she was there and she uh, helped me put the thing on and stuff because I'm not very good at stuff like that then one of my other friends came with her family my youngest goddaughter who's two she was so excited. She had a Norwegian flag with her and it was just so wholesome. But when we, you know, lined up and I don't know what that is called, you know, when they shoot a gun to symbolize the start, I don't think they actually shot a gun. I didn't expect that noise at all, but it sounded like a gunshot and well, obviously, okay. In my hometown, we don't hear gunshots ever. If this was in London, <laughs> But there, I, th I don't think people were expecting it if they hadn't been there before. But as I got in line and they were counting down and the gunshot went off or whatever sound that was and we started running, it was like, this is so much bigger than me, <laughs> you know? It was so overwhelming. I was like, it's actually happening. I, I felt really good and I was smiling and I was just really happy. I think everyone there had already run a marathon before. I had not. So I was like, I am not even gonna pretend that I'm gonna do this quickly. I'm gonna stay in the back for the most part I had people that I saw in front of me I literally expected to run by myself and that is what I did because there were also like half marathon and 5k and 10k and they started in front of me so obviously I never saw anyone except for the actual marathon 
on staff, my parents and eventually my friends when they started coming as well, because the route for this marathon is from one side of the island to the other side. So it's a straight, like it's not a straight line at all. There's like mountains and everything in between, but it's from point A to point B. So people were like driving and then catching up with me and then stopping and like cheering and then driving again <laughs> to like stop at a different point. And it was just super nice. When my friends started showing up because my parents were with me for a pretty long time because my parents were hella excited. I'm 29, but my parents still get equally as excited about everything I do as they did when I was five, which is super wholesome. So they were there for a lot of the time, which is really good because in the beginning of the day it was raining and it was very windy. So I was running with a jacket and I did not want to run with a jacket. So it was really nice that I could just take the jacket off and hand it to them and they could take it. I didn't have to, you know, throw it in the ditch and then come and collect it later because I saw a lot of people do that. But running went really well. I was was listening to music. I had prepared a marathon playlist and I also prepared a lot of like downloads from YouTube of like podcast style videos, you know, just people talking so I could listen to them because I really like that when I'm out running and stuff, but I only listened to about 13 minutes of a video. Music worked so much better for me. I realized I might post my marathon playlist because when I looked up a marathon playlist, I actually didn't find very good results. It was very easy when I hit the uh, half marathon mark, which which obviously is the half way there mark as well. I felt like I had just started running. I was prepared that I would hit the infamous wall <laughs> that marathon runners often hit at 30 kilometers. I hit that shit at 25 kilometers. I did not expect to hit it that early, especially because it was going flyingly uh, up until 20. But the road I was running on then was really boring and I was just waiting to turn. Okay, so there's a really long stretch that's pretty much like the same direction up until the half marathon. Then you kind of like get around the mountains then you take a little turn and then you run in one direction and it's kind of it's not a way but you're waiting to turn back towards this direction and before I got to this turn I was like ah! but then after I got there several of my friends started showing up and my sister-in-law and my nephew came and I was just like my heart is so full. I was so emotional. There was one specific landmark I was waiting to hit because then I knew there would only be like maybe two or three three kilometers left. I'm not exactly sure, but from there I knew that I could do it because I knew that like this is not far. And almost all of my cheerleaders had stopped there and it was just so nice. Like one of my friends was there with her kid and she was just bouncing like crazy. She was so excited for me. And then when I got to the finishing line, everyone there was cheering for me. I was the last person to get there obviously. And everyone up there were cheering and it was so nice. There was just so much love and support there. My finishing time was four hours hours 48 minutes and I am pleased with that. I did not have a strict goal in mind because first of all it was my first time doing it, second of all the weather was shit, third of all I was only doing it for myself so I didn't really need to have a goal if that makes sense, like finishing is good enough for me. But a person there told me that when they saw me leave town, like leave where we started, they said that they thought that she's not gonna get to the finishing line. Uh, why would you even say that? Like that's such a backhanded compliment. Like, what a weird way to phrase a compliment. Like you might think that that's a nice thing to say, but excuse me, someone's gonna have to be last, okay? And also I was very prepared that I was gonna be last. And I also thought the whole time, cause you know, obviously a lot of cars passed me by when I was running and everyone could tell that I was the last runner. But I literally thought to myself that no one can judge me because I don't see them running a marathon. Like they're driving past me. Like they're not even participating. So why would they even judge me? So that was my th way of thinking. And it's true. Why would, why the hell would someone someone judge you for being last. You're running a marathon. Like that's a crazy achievement. So one of my friends had bought me champagne, which was super fun, like super cute. They even brought champagne glasses. I popped that thing. It flew, almost hit someone. <laughs> it was not alcoholic, by the way, just, just saying. I don't drink. And I think that would have been a terrible day for me to start drinking. Oh, and also I only drank water and the energy drink thing that they had. I don't know what it was. It tasted like cough syrup, but I think it helped me. I don't know if it was just placebo, but it felt like it helped. Yeah. So all my friends were there and it was just super nice. And we, yeah, when I got over the finish line, my mom hugged me and then my two-year-old goddaughter ran up and she was like, yay. And I was, and I just kind of like grabbed her and I was like, I did it. <laughs> I'm 
was just so excited. It was so nice and I must admit I have watched the video of me crossing the finish line maybe 50 times. And then <laughs> this is the most Norwegian thing ever but they gave me some locally produced smoked salmon. That was one of the prizes and I also got I got a trophy, but my brother put it up on a shelf really high up and uh, I don't want to break it, so I can't really risk getting it down. <laughs> I think that's pretty much it, actually. It was so overwhelming. My heart was so full. I am still emotional about it. It was just really, really nice that so many people came together to make my day even more special. Some of my friends and family couldn't be there and they were really upset that they couldn't because they really wanted to, but a lot of them showed up and I just really, really appreciate it. And I feel, you know, for like a lot of people run marathons in, pe in places where they don't know anyone. And I feel like it really helped me to have a network of people that could cheer me on and just in general, like be there. But also knowing that a lot of people were watching me run on the like tracker website, cause they track where you are on the map. And a lot of people were following me. And every time I thought about it, I was like, oh, people are just sitting there like watching me. <laughs> like everyone cares so much about me. I was just, Mess. Also, to just get something more out of the marathon, I did a fundraiser for a Norwegian organization called Love Mama. Translated, it would be the Lion Moms, and they are parents of sick or disabled children, and some of them have also lost their children. In December, one of the families lost a child, and that's when I decided that I'm gonna raise money for this because their story just really hit me. And I reached my goal. That was amazing. On Thursday, I posted on Instagram to get that organization's attention because I was hoping if they would share it, then more people would donate. It didn't really have the effect that I wanted, but the organization itself was really uh, appreciative that I that I did it. And I also got to talk to the mom who lost the child and I got to tell her that I did it because of him and she was just so touched and emotional about it. I just thought it would be really nice for her to know that he, you know, got to make a difference still. And it that just really you know, touched my heart. It just also felt like I got to make it into something bigger than just about me running a marathon. I got to make it, you know, a bigger thing. So that was really nice. I also want to mention my recovery process, which was fine. It was so much easier than I thought. And it's only been three days, but I am not sore at all. Look what I can, what I can do. Look at my socks. They're fun socks. <laughs> but for the rest of that Saturday and Sunday, I played with my nephew, so I was pretty active. I didn't really rest. And on Monday, I had to go to work. On Sunday, getting out of bed was a bit of a ugh. And I definitely felt that I'd run the marathon on Monday. I didn't. It was kind of gone. And today I'm not sore. So it did not take very long at all. And I'm kind of shocked at how easy it was. I kind of thought I would be sore for longer, but at the same time, I never really do get sore after running because I do it so much. So, I don't know. It's really nice that I didn't have to go through that though. And also, my feet look amazing. They don't look like I went through a marathon and they don't hurt. I don't understand how. I thought, you know when you walk for like the whole day or you, you're just really active for a day and you're like the soles of your feet hurt? I nothing. And my skin looks nice. Does not look like I've been running for five hours on those damn feet. So I don't know how my body just handled it so well, but I'm still gonna say I don't feel right now that I'm gonna do it again. Not because I didn't enjoy it, because I absolutely loved it and I'm so happy that I did it. I wouldn't take it back for anything, but I've done it now. I don't really see myself becoming one of those people who run um, like 30 marathons. My goal was really just to have done it. Also, I am super excited to just bring up into any conversation that I ran a marathon. <laughs> One thing that actually, it didn't surprise me, but I just kind of hadn't thought about this, but I became a trash panda for the next few days. Like today I'm kind of like back to normal, but Sunday and Monday, I just wanted to eat the whole time. I was just like a bottomless hole. I just wanted to eat and eat and eat. And it's not weird because I burned like 5,000 calories the day before. So <laughs> I kind of needed to like replenish my fuel. But yeah, I don't think I have that much more to say about recovery. So let's move on to how I did it. I'm just gonna to say it again I'm not a fitness expert like I don't have any kind of education on this so this is just what I as a regular person did with no guidance whatsoever <laughs> like I just did this to do the marathon okay I think I just did like the basic things that people would know about so I just exercised I just ran and I ran and I ran. I ran every other day because I don't want to fuck up my body. So I would run for an hour, an hour and a half. And then sometimes I would run for like two hours. And then 
sometimes I would run for even longer. The longest I ever ran in one run before the marathon was 30 kilometers, so it's still a ways away from 42, but it was still pretty far, and I knew that I could do that, so. And I did this for a pretty long time, since last year. I don't know exactly when I started, when I got serious about it. Last summer I lived in London, and it's so goddamn hot in London in the summer, and it's so humid, so I don't think I was able to run, like, religiously every other day. So I was was pretty sure that my body was where I needed it to be to do it but for me the most important thing was mentally just knowing that I could do it and actually allowing myself to believe that I could do it because that's pretty important but for me before I started doing long runs I just kind of decided that I'm gonna run for an hour or I'm gonna run for an hour and a half and whatever and then I would do it because I decided to so I kind of put that same mentality into a marathon of course it was harder I'm not gonna pretend that this was easy okay it was hard I had to push myself and of course, I wanted to stop many times. I wanted to be like, okay, but I just felt like I didn't have an option. Like, I want to finish this because I'm going to be proud of this for the rest of my life. So that kind of just kept me going. So a few days before the marathon, I started carb loading and I tried to sleep well, but I, I, I didn't. I'm going to be honest because I was so, my body was just like in fight mode. Like, I was just like, oh, again, I am hella emotional. Whenever something is going to happen, my body feels it and it gets harder to sleep and all of that and I wake up a lot during the night and oh, it's a nightmare, it's it's a mess. The night before I kept waking up, like I, it was difficult, but I still like, I woke up early and I had a really nice morning with like coffee and playing TFT and like having breakfast early because obviously you can't re-eat right before running. The general advice is just to do what you normally do. So I had all my normal running gear, you know, I had like, I did normal stuff so that my body would feel normal because that's kind of what you need. It went really well, that's that. I feel like this was such a messy video and it was kind of hard to keep track but if you have any questions feel free to leave them down below and I will answer because I think it's really good to share with people like how to do stuff like this and also give support and all of that because if you want to run a marathon if you think you can do it work your ass off and do it it's so worth it like it's so worth just doing it because I thought I couldn't do it I did it well I, I thought I wasn't the person who could do it then I started believing in myself that I could do it and I did it you know I was able to do it I think it's just a lesson to all of us you know, don't go your whole life thinking that you can't do that because you're not that kind of person or that's too hard or something like that because realistically you can do a lot of the things you want to do. Like you can do a lot. You have a lot of potential. I think we should use it. Life is unpredictable and we should get as much as we can out of it. Thank you so much for watching this video. It meant a lot to me. I was really excited to make this video and wow, I'm still just ugh, a ball of emotions. <laughs> well, that's kind of my normal existence. Anyway, I shall see you next time. Keep it the good vibes. Bye!